Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a number guessing game in App Lab. You see a title label and then the instructions. It says the computer has chosen a random number between 1 and 50. You need to guess what it is. Click the Start Game button to begin. And now we see it, more instructions in a label. Type your number and then you can press either Enter or Tab. So I'll put in 25 and Tab. And as soon as I do that, it takes my guess and it places it in this label here. And it tells me in the message label that I'm too high, try again. So we should try something between 1 and 25. How about 13? Tab. And again, we see the number I've guessed has been added to the list of numbers that have been guessed. Now I'm too low, so I need to be between 13 and 25. Let's try for 20. Still too high. So let's try 17. Still too high at 17. Let's go for 15. And I, on my fifth guess, I guessed the number correctly. It says in the message label here, congratulations, you guessed it. And I can see all the numbers I guessed in order are listed here in this label. And then down below in a final label near the bottom, it says the number of guesses it took to guess the number. So that's our basic number guessing game. We're going to learn about how to use a text input box that detects changes to the box. We're also going to learn how to make a list, also known as an array. And uh, we're going to do a few other things that are cool. So let's get started in this right away. You'll want to start here at code.org. Come to the Create button in the upper right. Choose App Lab, which will create a brand new blank App Lab project. And in this particular one, we're going to have two screens. Go into Design View and choose New Screen. It'll call it Screen 2 by default. Let's go back to Screen 1, which will be our opening default screen. I've chosen to use the watermelon theme for mine. You can use whatever theme you want. However, it is important that you use the same kind of user controls and uh, give the same ID names to those user controls so you can follow along with the code more easily. Here on screen one, we're going to add uh, a label. We'll go ahead and put it at the top. Before we add another label, a time-saving technique or tip is to, first of all, set up all the properties of the label, then duplicate it. So here we have uh, this label one. We don't need to change its ID. We are going to give this a title, number, guessing, game. Give it a nice big font size here, 25. And because I've done that, I need to make it a little bit bigger. And it'll look better probably if it's centered. Once I have that looking the way I want, I can select that label. And on the right, duplicate it. Pull it down below. Change the text to something like this. There you go. Now you can see I've put the following instructions in this second label. We should go ahead and add a button now. Change its text to Start Game. Before we code this button, we want to make sure we rename it. The ID should be BTN Start. Now we can go to the Events tab up here and choose Insert and Show Code. It will add the click event for this button. We can see now at the top we have an event listener for the BTN Start button for the click event, and uh, that, that'll get us started. Before we do anything else, we should save our project, come up and click Rename. Just call it Number Guessing Game. You can put your own name in there as well if you want, and hit Save. Okay, now we want to stop and think a little bit about what we want our game to do when we click this Start Game button. We know we want to move from screen one to screen two. So let's do that first. We can come into our UI controls area and we can find a set screen block and drag that in here. And the screen we want to go to, we will select from the pull down menu. The next thing that needs to happen is in the background, we need the computer to choose a random number between one and 50. How are we going to do that? In order for the computer to hold a number in its memory, we need a variable. I'm going to switch to the text view of our program and probably code in this text view for most of the rest of this project. I'm going to move my cursor to the top of the screen and add a comment. That's two forward slashes. 
Here at the top of the program, we're going to add our global variables. Again, for the computer to remember a number, it needs to store it in a variable. And we want that variable to be global, meaning that it can be used anywhere in the program. We're going to call this variable hidden number. And we see I've used the keyword var in front of that statement, which creates a variable. Put a semicolon at the end of each line. Go down a line. Let's also have a place where we can store the guess. That would be the number that the user who's playing the game uh, can store their number. Now what we need to do is come down inside of our event listener for the start button and add a line here. Again, make sure that you uh, are typing inside the curly braces that mark the body of the function. So here inside, I'm going to write hidden number which is the variable I just created, gets, which is the equal sign. I always say gets because it's assigning value. It's not checking for equality. And I want it, I want to use a function that's built into App Lab called random number. You see it's a math function and it shows up in the list. I'm just going to select it so I don't accidentally spell it wrong. And then it also adds a set of uh, parentheses. And what we can do is put two numbers in there. We're going to put the range of numbers that we want to select from for our random number. I'm putting a 1, 50. Again, a semicolon at the end of that line. What this is going to do is use a function, the random number function, select a number, and store it in this variable hidden number. Now, it might be nice to test that out to see if it's actually worked. So we have this console.log function here that was put in for us earlier. Let's go ahead and uh, change this a little bit, get rid of everything inside the quotes, including the quotes, and inside that parentheses, instead, let's just put our variable name that we just created, hidden number. You'll notice that I'm using what's called camel case when I create variables and refer to them, and that is they always start with a lowercase letter, and then any subsequent words start with a capital letter. You cannot put spaces in your variable names, so be careful of that. Now let's test this out and see if it works. Let's hit the Run button, click the Start Game button. Oh, also let's move and open up our debugging console over here because this is where we'll see our hidden number. Click the Start Game button, which should bring us to screen two, which it did. But also down here, we also see that the number 37 is there. That must be the random number that was created by the computer. Let's reset and try again. If you run your program over and over again many times, you should get a different number uh, created every time. Okay, we have our start screen working. When we click the button, we get a hidden uh, number, random number. And now we need to design our second screen. One thing you can do is select a screen. Go to Design View here and select one of the labels that you already have. And then uh, in its Properties tab, choose Copy to Screen and choose Screen 2. Choose our watermelon theme again and uh, pull this up to the top. I'm going to quickly go ahead and design this screen. I'm going to go um, speed up the video a bit. But what we need here is we need five labels and one text input. Okay, here we have my screen two all set up. Let's take a look at what I have. I have a label at the top that simply states type your number, press enter or tab. This label will never change, so it doesn't really need a special ID. Then I have a text input uh, control, and I gave it the ID name TXT number input. I also put a placeholder in there that says enter a whole number 1 to 50. Next, I have a label um, that says your guesses with a colon, and again, it won't change, so it doesn't need a special ID. The next label is where all the guesses are going to be displayed as you play the game, and I've called that LBL all guesses and there's nothing in the text area. Next, I have another label where all the messages will be displayed, and I just called that LBL message. And then finally at the bottom, one last label, and it is going to have the ID LBL counter. It's going to display the number of guesses that uh, you have used as you play the game, and in there the text number of guesses colon zero. Okay, now that we have our second screen set up, we need to code the screen. But we'll notice if we look at 
screen too, there is no button that controls the operation of the code. And so how are we going to make the game update every time the person enters a number in this text input? Well, there's a different way to do it. There's different kinds of events that you can use. You can use the click event of a button, but you can also have the code detect if a value inside this text box has changed. This is how we do it. So on screen two, uh, in design view, select your text input that you put and go to the event tab. And you'll see here we have two different types of events and one of them is change and one's input. We're gonna use the change. So click on insert and show code. If you're still in code view at this point, let's go back to the block view. What has happened is that TXT number input control uh, has uh, an event listener has been added for it. And you can see here in the pull down menu, there's all kinds of different events that can be assigned to it. We're going to use change. Now, when we um, change the value in there, we are going to log out to the um, console. So let's test this and see if it works. Hit the run button, click the start game button. It should bring you to screen two, which it does. And now if I put my cursor here and put a number in there, 25 and hit tab, we can see down here in our console, uh, we see both the hidden number, 32, and the number 25 that I entered. It's working perfectly. The nice thing about the change is it can be triggered either by hitting tab or enter. So I've typed the number, let's say 30, tab, and it'll place it down here, or I could put in a different number, 44, and hit enter, and it'll also work when I press enter. Either way works. Great, so our program is working so far. However, the uh, user input is not being stored anywhere. It's just being uh, written out to the console. We need to store it in our variable called guess. This is how we'll do it. Again, I'm still in block view. I'm gonna go to the variable section. And we see there's uh, three blocks at the top. Two of them start with var, the other does not. You do not want to use the block with the var at the beginning because if you do, you'll be creating a new variable. And we don't want to do that. We've already created the variable guess here up on line three. So let's take the third block here, which just says x gets something, and place it here after our console line. And what we're going to do is say change the x to our variable name guess that we've already created, and we want to put a value in there. Now, what we have to do is get the text out of our input, so we'll come up to our yellow UI controls, find the get text here, and place it in that open slot. And the ID of the element we want to grab it from is our TXT number input. Now our user input is being stored in our variable. When we play the game, it's also helpful if the number that the user uh, typed in the input box is erased every time uh, he goes to guess a new number. So let's do a set text for our TXT number input and set it to, inside the quotes, just delete the word text, leaving empty quotes, and that will set the input box to blank. Now, when I showed you the game running earlier, uh, one of these labels displayed a list of all the uh, previous guesses. How are we going to do that? We understand that variables can only hold one value at a time. So how can we create a list of multiple values and store them in memory? The only way to do that is to create what's called an array, or in this program it's called a list. I find it easier to create a list if I go back to text view, so click on show text. Find your global variable section here, right after line three, let's hit enter. And we're gonna create a new variable, and we're gonna call it all guesses. Again, no spaces in that name. Gets, which is the equal sign. And then you put a set of square brackets, open and close square brackets. And that represents a list or array and the line with a semicolon. Okay, now that we have our array, how do we get the values into the array? We're going to use a special array function called push. Put your cursor here inside this function and add this code. We're going to use the name of the array that we just created, all guesses, dot, and then the word push. Push is a method or function that works with arrays. 
and uh, it takes a value, and it takes that value and puts it in the array. So after the word push, put open and closing uh, parentheses, and then type the name of the variable, guess, which holds our number that the user just guessed, and places it in the array. Make sure you put a semicolon at the end of that line. It's as easy as that to add a value to an array. The, the method uh, push always puts the new value at the end of the list. Let's go ahead and test our program by using a console.log command, and inside there, put the name of the uh, list or array we've just created. Let's test the program. Hit the Run button, click the Start button, enter a number here, I'll put 30, tab, and we see now uh, that we have two outputs in the console. We have our earlier uh, a line of text that tells us what number was entered, but then inside, right below that, we have a set of square brackets with the number 30 in it. Those square brackets, again, represent our array or list. I'm going to put another number, 2, tab. Uh, the number's been added. How about 15, tab? Every time I put a new number, we see down in the console it's being added to the list. 31, tab. It works great. Now we want to display our guesses, but we don't want them to display down here in the console. So let's go ahead and comment out that line. Instead, we want the list of guesses to be displayed in this label. Here, if I go to Design View and select this label, it was called LBL All Guesses. Let's go back to Code View, and we're going to add that to this function. It's easier to do it in Block View, so let's go back to Blocks. And let's find, under UI Controls, the Set Property block. Pull the set property block out and add it to the bottom of your function. Now we see the set property takes three inputs. The first is the ID. This will be the label where we want to set the property. That's again going to be LBL, all guesses. The next input is the type of input that we're going to uh, add to the UI control. And this is going to be text. And finally, the last input is the actual value we want to add to the UI control. The value we want to add is our all guesses variable. Now remember, this is a variable name, so don't leave the quotes around that name. Let's go ahead and test it. Now when we test it, we're going to see an error or a warning here. It says line 19, set property value parameter value is not a UI string. Hmm, what in the world does that mean? Well, what's happening is we're trying to take a list or array called all guesses and display it as text. And it's not text, it's actually an object. Uh, or a list. And so we need to do a little bit of magic here in this uh, last input area in order to get this to work. Let's go ahead over to this variable section and find the join method. We'll find it down here. It's one of the list methods. Pull that out and replace all guesses here. So we we'll first have to give the name of the list, dot join, and then inside this input you're going to tell it how to separate each value as you print it. We're going to put a comma between each one. Let's go ahead and test it now. When I enter a value, I see it's showing up here. And I'm not getting that error anymore. And we see that each value is being placed inside the list, being added to the end of the list with a comma in between. That's the way we want it to work. So at this point in our game, the computer is choosing a random number from 1 to 50 and storing it in a variable. The user is typing in a number, and that's being stored both in a variable and in a list. So what do we do next? We need to compare those two numbers to see if the user's guess is either too high, too low, or the same as the hidden number. To do that, we're going to create a function. Let's go over to the function section here. There are two different ways to create a function, we see. If you put your mouse over them, the first uh, says to find a function. The second one is to find a function with parameters. That's the one we want. So let's take that and pull it down below our current functions. First thing we'll do is give our function a name. We're going to call it compare numbers. Again, this function is going to do one thing. It's going to compare two numbers. In order to do that, we need to provide parameters or inputs that the uh, function can use. We see this n here. That represents the first input. So let's replace n with hidden, the word hidden, and we're going to add a second parameter. To do that, you click the right arrow, and we're going to type in guessed. It's always good to uh, place a comment before your function so that it's clear what they do. So let's go into text view, 
here on uh, line 20, right above this new function, let's put a blank line, maybe even two blank lines, and two forward slashes, which represents a comment. And let's describe what this function does. Now we see this little yellow warning here. It states that this function has been defined, but not called. And uh, it's really important to understand that when you create a function, it will not run until you call it. So let's come back into our previous event listener and add a line here. And let's type in compare numbers, the name of the function we just created, a set of parentheses, and inside that parentheses we have to give two values. And uh, the first one is going to represent the hidden number, and the second number is going to represent the guessed number. Now, we can't use the same variables we have down here because they only exist inside that function. Instead, we have to provide the two variables we already have, those global variables. The first one's called hidden number, comma. The second one is guess. So again, you can see these two variable names are similar to the ones I used down here, but different. That's to keep it clear. At the end of that line, put a semicolon. The compare numbers function we just created contains the heart of the logic of this program. We're going to compare hidden and guessed and see if the guessed number is either less than, greater than, or the same as hidden. To do that, we need to use an if statement. Let's go back over to block view, go to the control section, find an if else block, and place it inside compare numbers function. Now, we see there's only two clauses here, an if and an else. We actually want to have three sections to this if statement, so click on the plus, and you'll see it adds an else if in between. Now, we need to add conditions inside the parentheses of these first two clauses. This is where we are going to ask if the guessed number is less or greater than the hidden number. To do that, we need math operators. In the first one, we'll put a less than. In the second one, we'll put a greater than. In the first clause, we'll put guessed on the left and hidden on the right. It's important that you're using these variable names that you used as inputs and not your global variables. In the second clause, we'll put guessed first and hidden second. Find the set text block and put it in the first clause. Change the label to LBL message, and in the second spot, put too low, try again. Now that we have this first set text set up, let's go back to text view, and let's copy this line of code that we just added and paste it, control V, into the next two clauses of our if statement. So in the second one, it would be too high, try again, and in the third, it would be Congratulations, you guessed it. When comparing two numbers, there's only one of three possible outcomes. When comparing, one is either too high, too low, or the same. There you go. We're ready to test our game. Hit the reset button, run, start the game. Again, down in the console, we can see the hidden number is 14. That's for debugging purposes. Let's put the number 25 in. And it should say too high because 25 is higher than 14. That's correct. Let's put in the number three. We know that's lower. It says too low, try again. If we put in the number 14, it should say congratulations, you guessed it. It's working perfectly. The last thing we wanna to do to finish up this basic number guessing game is to display the number of guesses in this last label on screen two. Let's go back to block view, come down to our compare numbers function, bring a set text lock in here after the if statement. We have a label called LBL counter, and we're going to put in there a value that represents the number of guesses. Now we could create a variable like a counter, and every time we guess, we could make it go up by one. That, you could do that, but there's actually an easier way. Because we're using a list or an array, that list has, as part of its data, a length property which tells us how many numbers are in the list. So let's just change this value text to all guesses, that's the name of our list, dot length. And again, that contains the number of elements in the list. Let's take a look at it and see what it does now. Again, my hidden number I can see down here is 21, so let's speed this up. Let's just enter the uh, 
hidden number. So I had one, you guessed it, and it took me two guesses. I see the number two down here in this label. However, it would be nice if I gave a bit more information about what that number represents. So what we're going to do is something called concatenation, which is where you combine a string with another value, like a number. And so let's uh, show you how to do that. It's easiest to do this in text view. Let's go back to text. Here we have the set text command, and we see our all guesses dot length right here. What we want to do is in front of all guesses, we're going to put we're going to put a quote and our label number of guesses end quote, and then a plus symbol. And what that plus symbol will do is combine the words number of guesses with the number that's stored in the length of our list. All right, let's see if it works. Again, I see my hidden number is nine. I put in a couple different little guesses here. Finally, I guess nine, which gives me my winning guess. I guess three times. Down here it says number of guesses, three. It's working perfectly. So there you have it, a basic number guessing game. In the next video, I'll show you how to make this app even better. Thanks for watching.